Hi, Carolyn for Carolyn Thompson Series What Happened podcast. Um, so my question is for both you, Ali and Derek. And so the film starts out um, talking about this family and it gives you kind of like a broader perspective of what's happening in the city just as things are beginning to fall apart. But then the tone shifts and goes to uh, make it into a more contained story about two families. Can you tell me about shooting um, in the locations and shooting in the city and then shooting in this rural um location because it's, it gives quite a it does change the, the tone of the film a bit well uh, go ahead Derek I'll, I'll yeah, you go ahead this brother one. no all right this is, <laughs> we, I we smell go the fragrance of Ali in this answer, so. <laughs> well uh um you, you know the majority of the film is really contained you know it really is about the interactions between these two families and all these different people with different agendas bouncing off of each other with the same goal in mind everybody's trying to survive but you know who has one idea about how to do that and who has another idea and how those things conflict with one another really kind of turns it into a pressure cooker uh being able to set it up at, at you know when we're uh, early in the film and it's a, it's a wider more expansive kind of feel even in terms of approaching that image wise you know, I, I tried to shoot things as widely as I could, tried to give as much breath and as much air to those uh, pieces in the beginning so that when we went into the bunker, you really felt claustrophobic and contained and felt like you just didn't have any way out. We give a couple of breather moments and things kind of, you know, cook and start to boil over. So it was just like, it's a nice dramatic construct. I'm still here. Did everybody get that? <laughs> yeah, your voice was coming in and out towards the end. Well, I don't know if that was just me. Was it do it like and I was that was just me. I was just performing that. Um. That was just <laughs> my connection is stable. That was just pretending my is out. <clears throat> Wow. Um, Derek, and what about you for filming from in the two separate locations, like going from, as he said, open to a more contained setting? I love, you know, um, the contained setting was actually contained because, uh, um, you know, uh, me and Ali's conversation about uh, the character and, and the containment, it, 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 I was confused halfway during our, our shoot. And, um, I think my my favorite was the uh, shooting out in the open because I I love movement I love I love action I think um, during my career even though we're talking about the specific I felt like I've been shooting in contained spaces and so anytime I get a chance to uh, go outside um, but the stress of the contain I think just sort of added to the the suspense of what we were doing. Uh, the lightning of New Orleans, um, shooting inside of that little, uh, you know, box. You just, you know, the art directors, they really did a, a great, a great job with that. You know, I just want to say about Derek, uh, you know, I, I, you know, any actor wants to get out into the world and, you know, to do these big scenes. But when you get in a, in a confined circumstance like that, uh, the actor's gifts really start to come out because you know a lot of this film has to do with little you know there's microaggressions there's nuance there's little facial reactions there's all of these little things that 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 really help to carry a scene and you know and Derek is particularly good at this little level of nuance sometimes it's just a glance sometimes it's how long you hold a look you know sometimes it's when you briefly turn away for a second and all of those things you know really make a character whole and really make a character full and uh and i thought Derek really did an amazing job with that type of work in the show um so my question is i guess it's for both of you and it's kind of leading off of what you're talking about with leaders the interesting thing with this film um like we talked a bit about the space and using the space as a pressure cooker for the characters but mainly for the adults but i want you guys to talk about the kids now because something interesting happens um when the show in the film where um we see helen breastfeeding the baby and greg isn't the one who gets upset it's his daughter and i thought that was very interesting because greg didn't let his his ego step in the way and say oh my wife is feeding someone else's baby he's like this is what this child needs and I, and I and I see that that's a, necess a necessity at the moment, but his daughter doesn't understand that. She looks at it as him, as his, as almost as a way of, of his masculinity being eroding in the moment because her father isn't stepping up 
for his mother his father her father isn't stepping up and demanding that her her mother stop um giving like basically um nourishment to another child so i want you both to talk about that scene in particular and about the dynamics between the parents and the children <laughs> go ahead dna <laughs> well for me it uh you know, as a as a as a you know a, a teenage girl, you know, in this society right now, you got a ton of information. This is not a, a girl that's not smart. You know, kids always know what's going on in their house. They always know. You might think you're hiding something from them. You're not, <laughs> right? They're on the other side of that door. They're downstairs. They're in a room, so they know what's happening. And so, I love the idea that this girl has been raised in a lot of ways to be a truth teller. So there are moments when it might seem that she might be, you know, right up against the line of being disrespectful. But she even says in the scene, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm saying what you told me to say. <laughs> and so, you know, the, the, the parents are kind of being challenged around the fact that they are raising, you know, a young, intelligent woman who they are setting up to go into the world and have a real life. But those qualities come to play in the room when she can see that the mother and the father are not doing what she and her gut feels is the right thing to do. They're not communicating. <laughs> and so she's saying to her father, look, man, I don't like what this is. And she's, I think she's going to the party that she thinks can make a difference, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the other thing the kids know. Kids know, uh, oh, okay, mom's gonna dig in on this one. I'm never getting anywhere with her on this. So I should probably talk to dad, <laughs> like kids know. And so, I love the idea that that uh, the character of Zoe comes to her father and is saying, I'm having a problem. <laughs> Here's what it is. And that actually speaks to the honesty and the intimacy of their relationship is that it's not that she feels like she can come to him. She does come to him. She says what she believes. He listens to her. <laughs> and that's what she needs. She needs the comfort, the security and the safety of being heard and understanding that her fears are, are not for naught and that somebody's going to try to do something to protect her when she doesn't see the way. But she's still a child. And that's what her father has to say to her. You know, what you think this is, is something different because the position that you're standing in, you're not seeing it from where I'm seeing it. And ultimately, you know, they come to a, a, a close moment and it's helpful, I think, for both of them to be able to speak that out loud. But for the father, there's certainly a type of fuel to be able to say what is truly happening for him. And, and even him expressing fear gives his daughter comfort <laughs> because he acknowledges that this is a dangerous situation and we're working on it. And she's like, oh, okay, well, I thought I didn't, all right, as long as y'all working on it, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll take this hug and hope for the best. Wow, that's a good answer. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Z Zamani. Just, uh, Zamani Wilder. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's, she's uh, She's amazing. And um, yeah, I got a lot out of that scene as well. You know, um, there was some uh, comfort in it. I mean, my son is only uh, turning six years old, but he totally keeps me honest, you know, uh, even at, you know, at, at six. So it was interesting how he was mirroring what we taught him and how he mirrors that. And um, I, it was one of the, uh, one of my favorite scenes because uh, I, I, I felt like Zamani was just so present and she's a, a gifted actress. So I just shout out to her.